Can you give us some insight into what the research shows about people's ability to completely reverse type 2 diabetes, even if they're taking insulin? Is that possible? Is there evidence that shows that? You know, I should have added also, um, so when a person is diagnosed as a diabetic, when that happens, uh, the type 2 diabetic is usually diagnosed with having more insulin being produced than a normal healthy person. So this is not a shortage of insulin as you have with type 1. That's a different kind of a situation. But with type 2, you actually have the body trying to produce more and more insulin to trying to open up those cellular gates. But somebody can't do it. It does it for 5 years and 10 years and 15 years. And gradually, the pancreatic cells that produce insulin begin to get wearied. They get tired. They wear out. And oftentimes, then, the person shifts from being a type 2 diabetic, something like a type 1 diabetic, where you now have to utilize insulin. So this is a very, very serious uh, problem. It's not a matter of having enough insulin, but it's a matter of how are you going to use it. That makes a difference. So come back now to the question that you had, Robbie. Yeah, so, I mean, so the question is, you know, what, what does the research show on people living with type 2 diabetes, their ability to completely reverse type 2 diabetes? And all medications. Okay. Okay, I'd like to take that in, in two phases, if you don't mind. Phase one is, what has the research shown that contributes to diabetes? And then we can discuss what can we do to reverse it and recover health. Would that be fair enough? Okay. Absolutely. So here's the research. It goes back to 1927. Can you believe this? 1927, there was a doctor, <laughs> there was a doctor Sweeney, he did, did an experiment with medical students. He gave one group a 65% high fat diet. I mean, the American diet is about 35% fat. So this was a super, super high fat diet. These were healthy, lean medical students. He gives them a very high fat diet. He gives them hash browns and salami. He gives them cheese and cream and all these kind of foods. And then he wonders what happens to these people. They're healthy. And then he has a second group, another intervention group. And he gives them all the sugar that he can find. These people consume three quarters pound of sugar per person per day as part of their diet. I mean, all the things that you would never want to give a diabetic, right? And then after two weeks, the group that had the high fat products, within two weeks, 70% of these medical students tested diabetic. With a high fat diet, Virtually very little carbohydrates. In what period then, of time did this happen? What's that? How long did it take for them to develop the signs of diabetes? Two weeks. Wow. Now, this is a super rich diet, right? That's really whoppers the system. This is 65% <clears throat> fat. On the uh, people on the high sugar diet, he's, he waited for some of the results to come in. He waited five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks eight weeks, nine weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, he called the experiment, shut it down. He ran out of grant money. They could not find diabetes. This was a shocking experience. experience. Um, we all had the impression, as we look at it today, well, obviously, uh, these high fat people, they had no carbohydrates, they should be safe. No, no, it didn't turn out that way. So that was in 1927. There's a physician by the name of um, physician in Kentucky, Anderson. He repeated the experiment and he had the same experience. So this is not something that just happened many, many, many years ago. This is also something that is validated today. Then in 1935, there was a British physician, highly regarded Dr. Hemsworth, 1935. He put people uh, on a low fat diet, less than 20%, and he noticed that as they reduced their fat content, the blood sugar levels came down in these type two diabetics. So that was 1935. Then you have the studies at Harvard. You know, at Harvard, uh, they uh, took about 85,000 pre-diabetics. They were on their way to become diabetics. They followed them for 16 years, and 3,300 of these pre-diabetics became full-blown diabetics. And guess what they found? What made the difference? Why did some of them become and some of them didn't become full-blown diabetics? 
it was the amount of obesity affecting the body. 90% of the uh, progression towards full bone diabetes was related to lifestyle factors. And the obesity itself gave people a 40 times higher relative risk to becoming diabetics than those who were normal weight. So that's Harvard, very, very clearly showing. Uh, then you have the DPP, the uh, Diabetes Prevention Program. What did they do there? They had some 3,200 obese pre-diabetics. They followed them for three years. They put them on three different programs. First program, don't do anything, control group. Second program, we'll give you metformin, the number one chosen drug today to initially work with diabetics. Metformin, guess what they found? Within three years of the control group where people kept doing what they were doing, in this case, in three years, 29% became full bone diabetics. Those who metformin, only 21% became full bone diabetics. It works, doesn't it? But then they looked at a third group, and here's what they did to them. They said, we want you to follow a lifestyle. We're gonna change your lifestyle. Lose about a few pounds, not too many, just a gentle program. Uh, walk about 150 minutes a week. I mean, what's that? 150 minutes, that's 20, 30 minutes a day. And just those simple little changes, losing 7% of their obesity and doing some walking program. In this case, it wasn't 21% that became diabetics like with metformin, but only 14%. So here's the point. The DPP is very clearly showing us that if you make some lifestyle changes, you do not progress as well to diabetes as you do if you do nothing or even if you take metformin. So this is then sort of what I have found is promoting this disease called diabetes. It has to do with diet. It has to do with a lack of fiber. It has to do with, with an excessive amount of fat in the diet. So now I'm going to come to your second part, uh, Robbie, if you don't mind. You said, uh, what can we do to reverse type 2 diabetes? What can we do? Well, there are several studies that have been done here too. And I can take you to 1933. Folks, this is not something that we have just discovered. This has been around for 150 years. 1933. Now, we begin to talk about reversing. Here now you have a physician in Canada, Montreal, Rabinovich. And Rabinovich showed, he, he did a five-year study. He had 100 diabetics on insulin. He followed them for five years and he told them, I want you to really cut back on your fat consumption. Instead of being 40% to 45% in those days, he said, I want you to get down to less than 20%. Now this is 100 insulin using diabetics. The results, <clears throat> 24 of these insulin using type two diabetics were off insulin within weeks. Which again, makes a suggestion there's something in the diet, particularly in the amount of fat that plays an important role here. So that was Rabinovich, powerful stuff. Then there's a fellow by the name of Dr. Singh. You know, he, he was a young physician. Uh, he looked at some of the original data and he thought to himself, I wonder if I can duplicate this. So in the meantime, he had gotten the idea that maybe getting down to less than 20% may not be as good as if I would get down to 10%. So here's Singh. Singh takes 80 insulin using diabetics and he puts them on a very simple diet, foods as grown. You know what I mean that, by that? He gave them fruits, that's right, fruits, not fruit juices. Fruits, vegetables. He gave them legumes, beans, lots of beans. He gave them whole grain, starch, but unrefined. And he lowered the fat content to less than 11%. So this is a whole food diet that's very low in fats. It's also, of course, low in sugars. It's more of a natural kind of a food diet. And here's what he finds. Singh finds that within six weeks, 50 out of 80, 50 out of 80, that's 62% of these diabetic patients are no longer on any insulin. Shocking. 
And then he follows those that didn't quite get off in a six week program, he followed them and he found that another 18 out of these 80 got off in 18 weeks. Now, what that really means is, it means that 80 plus percent of the insulin using type two diabetics were free of insulin by making just some dietary changes, increasing starch, the right starch with lots of fiber to modify it, and following a simple lifestyle. Now that was then, I think that was 1955, published in Lancet. I mean, this is not some little you know, journal, this is Lancet. I mean, 1955, I mean, hello? And then along comes Pritikin, 1983. I was working with Nathan Pritikin. I saw, it opened my eyes, it changed my whole concept on how to treat diabetics. He made me aware of some of the original data from the 1927 and then 1933. You know, he had studied this thing all out. He had done the review of the historic development. And he said, we need to do this. 1983, pretty good published. I mean, it was amazing what I saw there. I mean, within three to four days, diabetics following a very simple diet. That's what pretty good did. It was 10% fat. It was whole foods, basically, no refined foods. Pretty good showed that within three to four days, the physicians at the center had to remove, had to reduce the insulin by three to four units every three, four days. Pretty good showed when he published this that 44% of his diabetics that came to this live in center, very simple foods, plus exercise every day, lots of lectures too. 44% of these patients on insulin were off insulin in less than four weeks. 44% of insulin using diabetics off insulin in less than four weeks. And then you looked at the patients that were on drugs, on you know, the, the pills, 74% of these diabetics free from any oral drugs. Now that was 1983. And then along comes, um, let's now Dr. Neil Barnard, Washington, 1994. He does a very interesting experiment and he uses again, whole foods, foods as they come in nature, lots of beans, lots of whole grains, lots of vegetables, lots of uh, fruit. And he, and he places these diabetics on this kind of food, they're all on oral drugs, they're all taking pills, 71% of these diabetics type two are no longer using any medication. It would have been dangerous keeping these, these patients on these medications. And then of course, you know, I, uh, I, I need to tell you this too, right? Chip, you talked about the comprehensive health improvement program. You know, I have something to do with that in some fashion. It has been my great joy for the last 30 years. Chip program, right? Yeah. And this is not a residential program where you, put people into a metabolic ward, lock them up, and you have to eat this food. No, you give them lectures four nights a week. And you say, here's what you need to do. You do it for four weeks. You measure everything before they come into the program and after the program. Listen to this. We had 535 diabetics come into the program as diabetics. They were classified as diabetics without any medication, but they were clearly diabetics over the 125 point number. At the end of four weeks, this is now measuring a three-week intervention program, really. Within three weeks, four to four weeks, instead of having 525, we only had 301 people testing diabetes. You know, I gave that presentation to a group of physicians. They looked at me and I said, what do you think happened? They went from 525 diabetics to 301. What happened to these people? There are 200 some people missing. They said, they probably died. <laughs> no! They, they thrive on a high carbohydrate diet. We give these people 70 to 75% of the calories is complete carbohydrates, unrefined, lots of oats, lots of whole grains. The same thing that Dr. Barnard did, the same thing that Nathan Pritikin did, and it's just like a charm. And Dr. Anderson, you know, I mean, years ago, I heard him speak in 1980. He spoke at a medical convention. He had done some of the work with Nathan Pritikin's program, actually. He came to Pritikin and he told Pritikin, Nathan, Nathan, 
you cannot give this kind of a diet to diabetics. It might be good for coronary disease, but Nathan, you're killing these people. You're giving them a carbohydrate diet. You can't do it. And pretty much say, well, have you looked at 1927, 1933? Have you looked at some of the data that we have, 1955 Lancet? And it was then that Anderson, this famous um, endocrinologist, especially diabetes, said, I can't believe it. I want to figure this out for myself. He used the critical concept of placing these people at a 70% complex carbohydrate diet, but unrefined foods and very low in fat. 50 to 75% of patients on insulin could be off insulin in weeks if they change their diet. He furthermore said that 85 to 90% of all the patients type 2 on medication like pills could be off these pills in a few weeks if they change their diet towards a more natural diet. Whole foods, plant-based, high in fiber, low in fat, obviously low in sugar, but high in nutritional value. I mean, this is the answer that has come about over the last 100 years, and we still haven't learned the lesson.